how many of us have seen viral makeup all over the internet instagram youtube if you have tiktok then tiktok it's confusing right there's just so much out there it's very difficult to decide what's worth it and what's not because i've realized and i've noticed that when a certain product becomes viral or uh, assumes this this importance it's everywhere right it's everywhere you go and there's not a lot of room left for debate or critique or just a careful analysis of why this product is what it is why it's as uh, ridiculously famous as it is and everyone looks nice online but the real problem is that makeup on camera and makeup in real life are two very different things so in today's video i have some cult classic uh, makeup products that have received so much hype and i have a lot of other formulas that i could have mentioned in this video but i chose to stick to the ones that are everywhere that most of us have used or owned at some point or heard of right or have been interested in at some point in our lives and this is going to be a brutal and very honest review right? even though makeup is a very subjective topic i think it does warrant a certain amount of discussion this video is based on how I feel about these products, how it, they have performed on me, and this is my personal opinion. Also, wanted to quickly mention that I have an Instagram page called Too Much Plush, on which I post a lot of makeup content. So, uh, quick reviews, speed reviews, mini reviews, some good old get ready with me's, and you can get to see so many swatches of some of the products that I may not be able to demonstrate here in this video. So, make sure you check that out. So I'm starting with the Kosas Revealer Concealer. I have the shade 03W. And if anyone has seen my Instagram or my friends, everyone knows how much I adore this concealer. It is the only base product I use because my skin isn't very compatible with foundation or other heavy base products. I started using this first in early 2022. And I've gone through around four such tubes or bottles. And that says a lot. What makes a concealer great? It should blend out very easily for starters. Another reason why I enjoy this concealer so much and why it's my favorite is because of the finish. I have extremely dry skin. And the sad part is that even though I have dry skin, it tends to get oily as well. But I don't have combination skin. And with a lot of foundations or base products or concealers, they end up looking horrible on my face to the point that it doesn't even make sense for me to apply anything in the first place. It's just better to go without any anything on my face. This one has this quality where it stays put with minor creasing, minor. It's a cream product, so it's a liquid product so i am expecting a certain amount of creasing but it's nothing horrendous never have i ever applied this product and thought to myself during the day okay am i looking r ridiculous is the concealer still there it doesn't embarrass me anywhere here's the thing right a lot of makeup products look great on camera great online but in person when you need them to perform the most they let you down and I don't like using such makeup. But this one definitely is worth the hype. I, some, I've quickly put on some eyeliner because I didn't really have any particular eyeshadow formula to discuss. But the next product on our list has to be this one from Essence. This is the Essence Lash Princess False Lash Effect Mascara. And I have seen this floating around the internet for so long. I'm very particular about mascaras. I think I've used the same mascara for over over three years now and I haven't found anything that has impressed me so far. But I have to say, this one is doing a fantastic job. I'll start with the most obvious and that's the packaging. I know these are small things, but the details, right? They make all the difference. So first of all, the cap of the the tube itself this is where i need grip right to hold the mascara and be able to put it on easily 
and this one does that so well it's it has this rubber element and it's very easy to hold in my hand and apply the product i'll try my best not to make the mascara face this formula is exactly what i need a mascara to do it gives me length right that's the first thing that comes to mind when i think of a mascara it's dark it's jet black and that makes the look even more impactful i don't know if you can tell the difference so this one has a one coat of mascara on the upper lashes this one has nothing so i'm back to apply a second coat so that's two coats on this eye and one coat on the other do you see the difference and for the price point that it comes at this is definitely worth the hype in my opinion trying out a viral product and having it work for me is just a very nice feeling because sometimes and i will be mentioning those products sometimes they don't work sometimes they just don't work so this one definitely has my stamp of approval the thing it's not the most long lasting it does tend to flake after a certain point but if i'm not rubbing my eyes if i'm not sleeping or rubbing my face in a pillow this does tend to hold well and for for the price point i really don't have much to complain about for this price point this formula it really does work this product has been everywhere recently and uh, it's it's actually been around for some time but i don't think the popularity is going away anytime soon this is the patrick ta for face double take cream and powder blush and i have the shade she's so la this shade does have a certain rosiness to it so it can definitely be used as a blush i can see that uh, it reminds me of sun kissed from nude sticks here's why i think it's worth it to begin with i'm getting two formulas in one right so i get a powder and a cream the packaging is lovely it has a nice plastic protector and i'm getting so much product in one component but what makes it worth it is the formula right all these things combined put together is what makes a product worth it in my opinion good makeup needs to blend out easily blend out on its own and that's exactly what this is now i'm supposed to put the cream formula on top of the powder very strange i'm just not used to doing that it's always the other way around for me surprisingly this technique does work the cream doesn't disrupt any makeup that i have underneath granted i don't use any foundation or other major base products but still it manages to hold its own i have it on my face now so across the face the forehead the nose for it to look as natural as possible this is a product that i was very hesitant and reluctant to buy initially because i was a little turned off by the amount of hype surrounding it and it was just everywhere right and the problem was that it never seemed to be in stock well so the patrick tar double take blushes are definitely worth the hype and i'm excited to try out different shades if i manage to get my hands on them i'm very scared now because the next product i'll be mentioning is not a favorite and i think i might get into trouble for voicing my opinion on this product because everyone loves it. it it has a very loyal follower base it's a highly coveted item in many people's makeup collections and if you're someone who loves cream liquid blushes i think you're going to be even more passionate <laughs> about this product and this is the rare beauty liquid Bl blush formula and i have the shade joy now i have tried to form an opinion on this right a favorable opinion rather i have never come across someone who doesn't get along with this blush but i don't i don't i don't get along with it before i upset you listen hear me out i love bright bold blushes i have several in my collection and i love a product that's heavily pigmented so those are not the issues i have with this formula right i love the shade makeup is my armor it's my shield it's my way of expressing myself and i want my makeup to perform and for me to not have to worry about it this is something i always keep i constantly worry about if it's on my face i have to keep checking my my face in the mirror um, that i don't look like a clown 
I don't like this formula so much so that I don't even want to put it on and ruin my makeup. It's patchy. It's it's just patchy. You know, I've used it. I've tried to use it. I've tried to make it work for so long, but it's just not working out. And it's patchy. It's uneven on my skin. So at first I thought, what if it's just the, this particular shade, right? But here's the thing. Joy is a best-selling shade. So many people adore it. So I don't think there's any inconsistency with this shade in particular and i just didn't want to buy another shade to check if maybe there's something wrong with the shade itself if i've bought a makeup product it either works or it doesn't i'm not going to go through 10 different shades to find out oh if it does actually indeed work if i don't like it i don't like it i've used it in some reels on instagram and if you look closely it ends up being so uneven across my face. And if I didn't have other makeup that performs just brilliantly um, compared to this one, I wouldn't have this critique, right? Because it's not a bad product, don't get me wrong. The shades are very exciting, very nice to look at, and the packaging is adorable. So I do understand why this product is as hyped as it is and why everyone loves it so much. But it's just not for me and that's okay that's okay because i have other blushes in my collection I, anyone who knows me uh, is aware of how obsessed i am with the blush category in particular and i have other blushes in my collection that just managed to do a fantastic job this one sadly isn't it for me because whenever i have it on my face i'm unable to control how it ends up looking right it's very inconsistent whenever i put it on i I struggle and I have so many peachy pigmented shades in my collection that I just don't even want to reach for this. It's not flattering on my skin. It appears to be paper thin on my skin. So instead of making it look flawless or uplifted rather, this blush manages to diminish the entire result, right? The entire effort that I've put into doing my face. It manages to undo all that. So some of my favorite content creators on YouTube and Instagram continue to recommend this product. So, But sadly, it's not the one for me. However, I do have a few other liquid blushes in my collection that I could recommend to someone who's on the hunt for one. Ever since the e.l.f. camo liquid blushes came out, they're very similar to these, or so I've heard. And I'm more excited to try them out rather than spend money on getting another shade that I'm pretty sure I won't like. So what, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, do you agree with me? Do you, have you had a similar experience with the Rare Beauty Blush formula or am I the only one? But I will recommend some other cream blushes. I have had more success with Flower Beauty Blush Bombs. And I have the shade Melon. I also have Cinnamon and... Uh, pinched i think it's called i think that's what it's called yes i'd say these are phenomenal it's easy to control it looks a certain way on my skin it's even it's, it's worked very well for me in the time i've had it and another great option is the juicy pang uh, blusher i have this in two shades i think one in cherry and the other in raspberry or pk02 it's a liquid blush but it's not as pigmented as the rare beauty uh, blush formula it's more dewy and it's definitely easier to control and both these formulas come at a very uh, different price point much lower so as someone who's trying out liquid blushes i would say go for these instead of the rare beauty ones but that's just my opinion i would like to reiterate this once again but i would definitely love to know how you feel about this take this is the dior backstage rosy glow blush and this is in the shade Coral. Uh, this is the old formula, not the new one. And this is what my blush looks like. I've had it for a long time now. And as you can see, the Dior embossing has long since disappeared. When I was a student in England, I had to attend certain events or formals. And I have very fond memories of this blush because this is the one that I would always use. I would use it in every single formal because it was the only one I could rely on to, to get me through the evening without messing anything up. 
and I knew that I could rely on this formula to look impeccable uh, throughout the event and it's very important right to have makeup products in your collection that you can rely on and this one is exactly that see it's another peachy blush and it's it's beautiful it's very sophisticated very elegant and i'll put it on my face i'll sh give you a little demonstration despite the fact that it's a matte formula it makes my skin look youthful hydrated plump and i could only learn to appreciate this blush when i finally put it down and started using other ones and i immediately had to go back to this shade because of how much it stands out in my collection it's been a long time since this blush formula came out if something's good it manages to last the test of time i'm not reaching for it all the time at right now because there have been some blush launches that have managed to distract me rather but this one is always going to be in my hall of fame because of how reliable it is and how effortless it is and i don't know how many more adjectives i can use it has this quality that it blurs my skin right for someone with texture and dry skin that is a plus that's definitely something that i'm looking for in products and gone are the days of 2020 when I used to think that the only thing I could use was a cream blush because of how dry my skin is. No, this one works great. This is perhaps the first powder blush that truly made me fall in love with that particular blush category. So I don't need to say too much about this formula. It's beautiful. They have released more shades, so I understand that this shade may not be for everyone. There are more pigmented options in this blush family. Definitely worth the hype in my opinion and I haven't been able to find a dupe for it as well. The product, but it is a skincare product and this is the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask in Berry. This is the Berry one. I adore this lip mask and I feel like I have a certain authority when it comes to talking about lip balms and that's because I have dry lips like horrendously dry lips i used to be someone who had a chapstick in my hand all the time it was water and then lip balm for me and i tried every major formula out there and then i found the one there are several reasons why this particular formula stands out to me the first and most important i think this is the deal breaker that's the ability of a lip balm to heal and repair rather than just fix the problem for the time being whenever i would apply lip balm nothing would repair that condition right i would have to keep reapplying that but the laneige not only manages to hydrate my lips when i've applied it but that hydration lasts for a long time and i've seen a definite improvement in the quality of my lips ever since I started using this and I should have documented just how many of the Laneige uh, lip masks I've been through since 2020 and this is just something that I always have with me because I don't need to use it all the time. This is the small size and it will last me for a few months before I have to go out and get another one and the bigger ones last me a year but it has worked very well for me in my opinion, it's the best lip hydrating product, repairing treatment that I have ever used. And I would recommend this 100%. This is another tricky one. This is the Clinique Black Honey Almost Lipstick. And I'm on the fence. I'm on the fence about whether or not I should be recommending this to anyone. And there are a couple of reasons, right? So I've had this for around two years at this point. So a long time. And I have managed to make my way through the product, so there's not a lot left. It looks beautiful on people online. It looks amazing. And I knew I had to get it. I knew I had to get it for myself. So I'll just show you what the shade looks like on the back of my hand. So I can keep building it up. And it's this lovely, very flattering tone. I have to be ruthlessly honest with you. If you're someone who has been eyeing this product for a long time, saving money for it, it's it's important that you know what exactly you're getting into not why am i unable to get along with this product 
it's not the shade it's not the packaging i love that i love the history behind it i love the fact that it's been used in movies and popular culture and that's why i uh, i was initially so attracted to it the only problem i have with it is the formula and that's the fundamental element right that's the most important part how it actually looks on my face problem the moment i wear it it bleeds it sinks into the lines of my lips it it exaggerates lines that i didn't even know i had right i'll try and demonstrate the problem so here's the thing on camera this looks fine this looks really lovely and i am building it building it I and mean, look at that it's this lipstick that's slightly glossy it's easy to slap on that's exactly what i wanted it to be but here's the thing in good lighting and because of the camera i'm unable to show just how much it sinks into the lines of my lips to the point where it's embarrassing it is embarrassing to go out in public or be at an important event or be or even talk to someone with lips that look like they've been beaten to death i think the only reason i cut it some slack and i'm still trying to use this product and incorporate it into my life because of the history right this product has been around for so long and the shade i really do think that this shade is quite unlike any i've seen it's it just works with everything especially with the dress i have on the only thing that really that makes me sad is how it performs and right now it's not easy for me to demonstrate just how badly it ends up sinking into the lines of my lips i don't want, I don't want to use makeup that's inconsistent but i am interested in trying out the gloss version of this shade the black honey gloss if you're still here and if anyone's unhappy that i today had not so nice things to say about the rare beauty blush i have another rare beauty formula that i really do enjoy this is the rare beauty uh i think it's also called the soft pinched liquid lip oil or something like that and i have the shade wonder i will start with one thing that annoys me about this product and that's the misleading name it's, it's more like a lip stain it's made in korea so it makes a lot of sense it's um uh it's very similar to you know your korean lip tints like the roman juicy lasting tint or um, several other formulas from peri pera so it's very similar to those and it's just a beautiful product i understand why it took off the way it did it has a nice soft doe foot applicator they're very easy to just slap on and i love using this at um, airports or situations where i know i don't really want to uh, be finicky about a lip product or keep going back in for more because once it fades it does leave a nice stain again the reasons why i think it's one of the best lip stains i've used is because it's very easy to remove uh, the packaging's beautiful the shade are lovely it's very nice and cooling on the lips so it's a very comfortable formula it doesn't enhance or pick up on any flaw or anything going on with my lips i've used it on days when i've had very dry horrendous lips and it's managed to perform really well even in those situations so again makeup that works that's reliable that i don't have to worry about so this one is definitely a yes for me this next product is the definition the very meaning of the word hyped and viral and this is the dior lip glow oil and i have the shade of rosewood now i got this back in late 2021 this is when it was at the height of its popularity everyone had it and if you were cool or if you were the it person you needed to have this oil in your collection and I remember distinctly stating to someone at the time that this is perhaps the best lip product I've ever used in my life and that I don't want to buy or use another after this. And you know what? Even after all these years, I do stand by that statement. I do see my argument. I do see my point. It was really the Dio lip oil that kind of augmented or mm, spearheaded this campaign, this movement around lip oils, I believe. So couple of things the packaging is gorgeous the doe foot is the best no one no 
no amount of dupes can come close to this doe foot. I ran out of storage, so I have to record my video on another platform. So the audio may be a little... Mm -mm. So the shine is just unparalleled. It's stunning. And no matter how many lip oils come and go, this will always be a favorite of mine. It always makes me feel like a model of duty. It's very elegant, very effortless, fills in the lines of my lips, never have to worry about any bleeding. This is an incredible product that will always have a special place in my heart. So we're on to our last uh, product in this video, and that is the Benefit Benetint. I have friends who have never used makeup in their lives. People who despise makeup, they don't use makeup at all, and even they have it. Managed to reach this point. It, ha it has a lot of history, just like the Clinique Black Honey Lipstick. And I think that's also one thing that adds to its overall charm. So this is definitely the most long-lasting stain I've used. So whenever I go to my dentist's place and... I want to have some sort of lip product, but I don't want to have a full-fledged lipstick. This is what I have on. It's undetectable. I have to be very careful when I apply it because once it's on, I, it doesn't budge. So I have to be quick, but uh, very precise. However, the only reason why I don't end up using it as much as I would like to is because it is slightly finicky to work with. I have to be very quick with the application and if my lips are not in their best most hydrated condition this can emphasize dryness and it ends up collecting but in general I do understand the appeal and the hype surrounding this product and I'm glad I have it in my collection but the benefit does have its own cult status and I understand why. There you go those were some of the most viral products that I have in my collection my thoughts and opinions on them this was not an exhaustive list i do have more products that i wanted to mention but i didn't want this video to be too long i wanted to be as honest as possible so that you could have the best chance at figuring out what to get what not to get are viral products even worth it and i would be very grateful if you'd consider subscribing to my channel and joining this community here and liking this video if you found the reviews to be very helpful and i hope to see you in the next one